Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to calculate the change in entropy by allowing two containers containing one kilogram of water, one kept at 100 degrees centigrade and the other one at zero degrees centigrade. We connect them with a conducting pad along which heat can flow, and then we allow the process to continue. We no longer keep the containers at those original temperatures, and eventually when heat travels from where it's hot to where it's cold, eventually the two containers will then reach thermal equilibrium at 50 degrees centigrade. Now we're going to calculate the change in entropy, but not by using the average temperature. We're actually going to use integration to calculate the change in entropy. So in this case, we have to say that ds, the change in entropy, a small change in entropy, is defined as a dq divided by the temperature which it happens. And now temperature will not be a constant, it will be a variable. And so since dq can be defined as mc dt over temperature, we then can see that the change in entropy, S, is equal to the integral of dS, which is equal to mc times the integral of dT over T from the initial temperature to the final temperature. M and C, of course, are constant, so we could take them outside the integral sign. If we then calculate this, this is equal to mc times the natural log of t evaluated from t initial to t final, which means that the entropy change is equal to mc times the natural log of t final minus the natural log of t initial, which can then be written as mc times the natural log of the ratio of t final over t initial. Notice when t final is smaller than t initial, this will be then a negative quantity because the natural log of number less than one is negative. And if t final is bigger than the initial temperature, then the natural log of that will be a positive quantity. So now let's apply it to what we have here. We can then say that the change in entropy will be equal to the mc times the natural log of t final over t initial of the hot reservoir plus the mc times the natural log of t final over t initial for the cold reservoir. So this could be written as mc times the natural log of t final over t initial of the hot reservoir plus the mc times the natural log of t final over t initial of the cold reservoir. So let's see what that ends up being. Remember that in the previous video, we calculated the change in entropy to be 100.91 joules per Kelvin. So let's see how much of a difference it makes to use the average values for the temperature versus the exact values with integration. So this is equal to one kilogram times C, which is 4,186 joules per kilogram times Kelvin. So notice that we get joules per Kelvin again, and then we multiply times the natural log of T final, the final temperature for the hot reservoir is 348, and the initial temperature started at 373, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And then we add to that plus one kilogram times 4,186 joules per kilogram per Kelvin times the natural log of the final temperature would be 348 Kelvin and the initial temperature started, oh no, it's not going to be 348. The final temperature is going to be 50 more than 273, which is 323 divided by 273. So 273 is 0 centigrade, 323 is 50. And so we go from, uh, let's see here, the final temperature is not going to be 348, it's going to be 323. So let's compare that here. 100 degrees centigrade is 373 Kelvin. 50 degrees centigrade is at 323 Kelvin. This is at 323 Kelvin. And 70 degrees centigrade is 273 Kelvin. So it would be better to put those in there in the first place. So notice for the hot reservoir, we start at 373, the initial temperature, we end up at 323. For the cold reservoir, we start at 273, 
and we end up at 323, an increase of 50 and a decrease in 50. Should have done it in the first place. All right, let's calculate that. 323 divided by 373, take the natural log of that, multiply it times 4186, and we get minus 602.47 joules per Kelvin. Plus, for the second portion, we get 323 divided by 273, take the natural log of that, and multiply by 4186, and that gives us 704.00. Let me try it again, 323 divided by 273, take the natural log times 4186 equals, yes, we get 704.00 joules per Kelvin. Again, notice, that the change in entropy at the cold reservoir is always going to be a magnitude, is always going to be bigger in magnitude than the entropy change at the hot reservoir, so that the positive change in entropy is always bigger than the negative change in entropy. So when you add them together, you always get a positive change in entropy when you add the two sides together. So let's go ahead and take 704, subtract from that 602.47, and that means that the change in entropy is equal to 101.53 joules per Kelvin. And notice, this is the result we get by doing it more accurately, by taking the integral of dt over t. And if we compare that to what we get when we take the average value, you can see that the difference is actually quite minor. But this would be the more exact way to calculate it. This is a quick, faster way to uh, calculate it by just simply taking the average temperature. Either way, you get roughly the same result. But what we can see is that in every case, whenever heat is exchanged from a hot reservoir to a cold reservoir, the entropy will always go up of the system. And so that's the concept we're going to use now to try and calculate the free Gibbs energy or the Gibbs free energy and the Helmholtz free energy when we talk about those two thermodynamic potentials. And that's how it's done.